my name is Professor David Lowry and I'm here with a team from the University of Texas at Dallas in the Hansen Center for Space Sciences and our group is called MINTS which stands for Multiscale Intelligent Interactive and Integrated Sensing. So what we try and do is comprehensive holistic sensing of the environment from micro scales to the global scale using a whole array of sentinels from satellites robotic vehicles we have sensors across cities recording 24 7 um, so we try and comprehensively characterize the environment Today our exercise was to demonstrate an autonomous robot system that can rapidly much quicker than the existing systems that we know of to gather data to then use machine learning to provide comprehensive maps of an environment that maybe you've never seen before. So our robot team here had two robots. So one part of that was the aerial robot. So the aerial robot was carrying underneath it both a hyperspectral camera measuring these 462 wavelengths from the ultraviolet to the near infrared. It also had a thermal camera. The thermal camera can be useful for a whole range of things um, and also a visible camera. So we had pre-programmed with our autonomous control software exactly the area we wanted the vehicle to survey and in fact in just over three minutes it surveyed that entire area and it took off automatically, it flew automatically and it can also land um, automatically. And while it was flying it was capturing this hyperspectral imagery, the thermal imagery uh, and the regular visible imagery. Now the reason it's significant that we had a regular visible camera is that we're also investigating something called super resolution. So um, you're probably familiar, like in a CSI movie, there's a, a, an obscured car tag and you can't see it and they auto-magically suddenly zoom in. So we want to, we're working on that same type of technology, but instead of just doing it for enhancing the spatial resolution, we're investigating going from using a regular visible camera to the much more detailed information of a hyperspectral camera. So the second part of the team that operated today was the robotic boat. So you can think of the robotic boat as giving us the ground truth. So we can rapidly survey a large area with the aerial vehicle and capture imagery, but we really need to know what does that imagery correspond to? What do those spectra actually mean? So the boat was laden with a set of sensors um, about 30 sensors in fact, a whole array, a sonar um, giving us the depth and the bottom type, the type of uh, vegetation growth and then a whole set of composition sensors, things like um, algae, oils um, and we can also have a mass spectrometer that can measure all the components of the water and the air. So the boat goes out and directly sails underneath where the aerial vehicle was flying. So that precisely coordinated element is critical because that allows us to rapidly get the, the relevant coincidences. So when NASA does this, and I, I was part of doing that when I worked there, you actually have these happenstance overpasses. You have a satellite in a fixed orbit that happens to overfly your scene of interest, your scientific crews or whatever else is making the measurements. Here, we very rapidly get a massive data volume because the robotic team knows what the other robot is doing and in a precisely coordinated way measures at just the locations required. So this was a proof of concept that could easily be scaled to have many more robots, an amphibious ground vehicle, um, walking robots that could be part of this collecting the ground truth on the one hand, but then once you've got that ground truth, you've created your large area maps, they can also be part of verification. So if it seems there's a hot spot of some contaminant at this location, before anyone goes near it, you can then know where to send your walking robot, um, your ground robot to verify, is there really a contaminant there or your boat? So 
you don't just get a map, you can have some confidence that you really are seeing what you thought you saw. Obviously, safety is a prime concern for us. So today we were very uh, fortunate to be able to operate on a ranch. So to keep things safe, we used, uh, as an example, release a dye that has been used for a couple of decades for hydrological uh, experiments. So it rapidly disperses. But what is significant for our use here is it has a very characteristic spectra that we can see from the aerial vehicle. So it allows us to exercise the entire process. So step one was we did our training of the whole wide area. We used our machine learning to learn the mapping from what's in the water to what the aerial vehicle sees. Then to exercise that team to check that it really works, we then release a known contaminant we then fly over with the aerial vehicle. Do we actually see it? Can we map it? Yes, we can see it. Yes, we can map it. Then we send out our boat to the location of the, the contaminant to, see, to verify, OK, yes, we really did see it. This is how much we measure. And we not only were taking the real-time measurements, we were also doing underwater uh, video of that over water to for part of the verification. We chose this particular case study uh, in an aquatic environment for a couple of reasons. One, because the water is a little less accessible to make measurements. So it's a slightly more challenging task. It's not your easiest task. And number two, that the maritime environment, say around ports, hugely significant for deployments of all kinds. So much materiel moves through ports. There's a lot of people that can be there. So if a contaminant has been released into that environment, it could have a massive impact, not just of those that directly encounter the water, but those that are in the vicinity of it. So I'll give you a specific example of that. With the recent Hurricane Harvey, Hurricane Harvey made landfall in Lockport, um, Rockport and introduced uh, and encountered a lot of Houston. In Houston, we have these huge oil refineries and other Superfund sites. Many of those chemicals went directly into the water as a result of the hurricane. Several neighborhoods were surrounded on three sides by that heavily contaminated water. Those chemicals uh, were outgassing, people were having some severe respiratory issues, and they had no idea what was in the water that was being released. And then the cleanup crews were going unprotected into the water, causing further issues. So that type of um, issue could be repeated many times, especially as the bulk of the mega cities on the planet, and there's more and more mega move to mega cities happen to be coastal near waters. One of the things we mapped today was dissolved organic carbon in uh, this lake. So in our survey, which took about 15 minutes, we gathered close to 4,000 data points completely autonomously. So you could see that you can have a very rapid collection once you've done that data collection, machine learning can create a map from what the aerial camera sees and then create a map over a large area. So the new things in the system are it's completely autonomous. Um, you may never have seen the components that you are trying to map before, and it's also extensible. So we just had a very small team this time, one aerial vehicle and one robotic boat but that could easily be extended to multiple aerial vehicles, for example, extending the wavelength range into the infrared um, to have a synthetic aperture radar, which measures the texture. So if you have a, an oily release, for example, that will change the wave heights and the texture you see. It can also be used over land to look for um, buried explosive devices and things of that nature. One of the paradigms that we've operated on is we want everything we do to be scalable. We don't want just to have a one-off. We want to be able to 
build systems that we can roll out at large scale. So if it's not just one unit, supposing now it's standard issue for units in a given context, they can have this capability. It's all packed up in packing cases and out it goes. So, so far what we used was really quite a high-end camera that was off the shelf, but because of its capabilities, it's rather heavy. And so we needed to use a large aerial vehicle that performed very well. It was very smooth. It's made for movie making and it did an excellent job. But it's easy to operate, but it's a little large. So you could easily imagine that we might want a smaller system that the aerial vehicle can go in a backpack or something like that. So there are now cameras that actually weigh just 30 grams that would allow us to use a much smaller aerial vehicle. It doesn't have quite the wavelength range, but it could be very effective nonetheless. So this was a proof of concept with off-the-shelf items, but it's very tractable to easily go to the next step where we have now a much more miniaturized uh, solution that an individual operator could use. So not only for the aerial vehicle, also for the robotic boat. So the robotic boat we used is a really beautiful boat. It can go unmanned for 20 hours. It's very easy to operate. But still, you could imagine you might want a smaller uh, aquatic vehicle. So we built a demonstration hovercraft which is essentially based on a small surfboard that could is controlled by the same software that controls our aerial vehicle. So both robots could be being controlled from the same software and one individual could then deploy both of them um, so it's much smaller and much lighter. One of the things I'm really passionate about is making things usable to provide actionable insights. And a key part of something being usable for actionable insights is if we can use it in many contexts, it becomes even more valuable. So if our system is not just used for, say, the surveys we were talking about today, but if we can use it for other purposes that could also be relevant to keep people out of harm's way, that is very valuable. So take, for example, this hyperspectral camera that today we were using to look at the composition of the water and map the release of our contaminant. That same camera we could be using to look at the healing of wounds. Um, and in that context, you can use that hyperspectral camera to see like the depth of the calluses there, the oxygen um, in the skin, and a whole range of other things that very usefully map the progress of the wound healing. We mentioned that we want to provide actionable insights so that either individuals or their commanders can make informed decisions. So some of these are actually rather basic questions that right now it's very hard for us to understand or to characterize. Like, is the area safe? Like, does an area we're about to move into, are there some contaminants there or some issues that we should really know about before we go into it? So we've seen we can ad start to address that question, is the area safe, by the comprehensive and autonomous sensing producing these large area maps rapidly that we've spoken about. Another reason that that might be important is, do we need protective clothing? And if so, what protective clothing should we have? And finally, sometimes we know there's a contaminant maybe been released there, but we don't know the best sampling pattern to rapidly identify it. So typically there are basic star patterns or other patterns that are used to do those large area surveys, but they can take us a while to get to the right location. So in the paradigm with this autonomous team, what we do is the large area survey, say of just, with just the aerial vehicle. Then we use something called unsupervised learning. So essentially what that is, is we, we split up our environment into a set of different regions where each region is, is similar to the other elements in that region. And so in doing that way, supposing we split up this whole ranch into a thousand classes and supposing someone had come in here and released a contaminant that contaminant would have a characteristic spectral signature. So it would fall into, say, one or two of our, of our thousand classes. So we form the wide area map 
And then once we know that this class contains a contaminant, we now know every other location where that contaminant is present. And so being able to rapidly do a survey, classify the area you've just surveyed can help you do a much smarter um, real life truth checking on the ground for where the contaminants are. It can quickly guide you to the contaminants rather than just stumbling across it by using the usual approach.